Welcome, everyone. I'm really looking forward to this conversation with Trish, Trish Ebert, who is a leadership coach. And we're going to be talking about, and I'm going to read it because I want to get it right, trauma advice and empowering conversations. It's, we felt, we've known each other for a little while now, and we've been really supporting each other. And we've been talking about trauma and how it affects not only in your life, but also in business. And that's how this conversation came about, because what Trish also made me realize, but put it beautifully in words, is there's so much advice giving nowadays in this world. And um, so we want to talk about to, how to grow your understanding of having trauma aware conversations, how to explore, no, to explore how to support empowered change. And I was been thinking about it, um, Trish, before you come in, then I also want to, I'm going to read her bio because it's for fascinating reading. And I know I'd forget something important because I love what she's written. But since we've spoken about that, I looked over my last, it's been nearly 14 years since I triggered into complex PTSD. And I've been thinking about coaches and the role they've played in my own business and why couldn't I discern. And I realized I needed to be given advice or thought I did because I no longer had the discernment and I didn't know how to actually say, is that, do I want that or not? Is that advice or not? So it really got me thinking and understanding some parts of me. So Trish, um, I'm going to just acknowledge the Wadjuk country that I live on. Trish, I'll hand you over for a moment, then I'm going to read your bio. Yeah, and I'd love to acknowledge the Dirigange land that I stand on and to acknowledge all the land of everyone that's listening and, you know, the, the land that you're all standing on that has been held and held well. Thank you. And thank you for that. It is true because it is about how do we hold not only ourselves, but each other, but as you said, the community and the universe. So I love that. So thank you for doing that. And I think more and more it's becoming important because I think there's so much trauma around in the world on every level that we need to just talk about and honour. So before we start, I'm going to read it to you, as I mentioned, her bio, Trish's bio. Let's rise together. Trish helps you connect more deeply with your inner leader and walk in the world from that place of power. Through far-flung studies and a Jedi-like dedication to soul searching. That's why I wanted to read it because I love that. Trish has developed a method to help people to move from conflict and burnout into resilience and flow. As a coach, workplace alchemist and conflict specialist, she's on a mission to support both individuals and teams to be happier and stronger. So from that, what I'm understanding is you work with individuals, but you also work with businesses and corporation. Um, so I want people to know that, that if you're wanting to... Uh, learn more about Trish and understand she might be able to support you it's it's that broader spectrum okay she holds a master's of wellness and a master's of communication she's a mediator and conflict coach as well as a shamanic practitioner well that's why I wanted to read it so let's let's start the conversation um Trish about yeah. advice giving or not or not yes okay well Thanks for having me. This is um, one of my um, places that I can get a bit ranty talking about advice. Um, and I think for me, it really landed how, how advice really affects us and how it lands for us and how it feels giving it out and what that what the energy is of that and what the deeper intention is around both and you put it really beautifully in terms of thinking you needed advice mm. and that you then lacked the discernment to be able to choose whether that was the advice that you wanted to take on or not mm. and we really do end up disempowering ourselves when we are handing handing over a direction to other people's advice which I don't know, I just really find that that's fascinating because we always think that advice is helpful. Like if we if we give advice, then it's a really um, it's a helpful thing to do because we're gonna by telling people what we think by advising them, which I guess is the root of the word, by advising people, that has a really different vibe to it than giving advice, doesn't it? To advise and to give advice, so to really shift back out of giving advice and into advising which is where your it comes with that parcel of this is what I advise and then you use your discernment whereas giving advice it does it kind of can take out that 
that connecting we, we all have with our own direction and purpose. God, I like that because I hadn't thought about that because the way I've been doing it, because I don't use the word advice, never even thought to, but I like that. For me, is I, I say I give a suggestion. I suggest this or I recommend or something like that because, again, something I've learned and we've talked about this too through my own therapy and then working with clients, is it's actually within us, isn't it? We've just lost sight of it. Mm. And like you said, um, I'm sure you used the word or something similar, what we don't realize is that we disempower the person and we also disempower ourselves because we don't actually understand that that's what we're doing. Mm, yeah. You and know? Yeah, and it's interesting that you were saying at the start with the, all the different coaches that you were reaching out to as far as creating a business and, and moving forward with it. And I think it's interesting the whole realm of coaching because it is... It is so many different things. So, you know, in my master's of wellness, I studied wellness coaching and then I went on to lecture in wellness coaching at RMIT. And coaching theory from that coaching psychology perspective, there's no advice giving in that kind in coaching. That advice is like it's one of the golden rules of coaching is that we don't give advice because what the role of a coach is is to help the person to find their own answers. And the moment that we start advice giving, then we're not leading them on a path to find their own answers. We're laying a path for them, um, which is very different. Yes. Yes, and I like that laying a path for them because what my, came to my mind is that the ego is involved and it's about their way of doing it. This is my interpretation. This is what it's been for me. So this is why I wanted this discussion to happen. But you don't mm. realise you're being led down through, because I work with energy, like you, you, you're going along in their energy, like you said, on their path, their energy. It's actually not yours. And that's why, I, and then it's actually constraining. You don't realise that you're constraining yourself because you don't actually go there and, Take, take what you want, leave the rest. You don't know how to. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, that we do, and we kind of live, as you were saying, we live in a society where advice is, it's kind of the norm. And, you know, like we look at, you know, you go to a doctor and they prescribe, you know, like there's this level of going to experts for them to advise us. But there's so much of a culture around that, that we, it takes away our power and so then we become disempowered through that process rather than being advised and I will take that under advisement um, we are all more told what to do so it's when advice moves into that telling someone what to do part I think that's where we really get disempowered especially if we keep handing over and being reliant on that I think that's a good point because what you do the word passive comes to mind you become passive. So you actually become, I need to hear that. I need to hear that. And particularly if you're doing something new. So in this case, like because we're, we're both business owners as well, and I'm sure it happens in careers or anywhere in your life, that when you, oh, I've just lost train of thought, but it is about you become passive. You're waiting for others to tell you what to do because it come, can come from childhood. It can come from this. And, of course, if you're doing something new, like running a business, you are wanting other people's advice because you're going to cling on to anything to help you because going into something new, whatever it is, you feel uncertain, you're unsure, perfectionism, all these things come into play, don't they? But if you've been through trauma, you're coming from a different base, even yes. more. And that's why you said we wanted to talk about it. So people become trauma aware, which I feel has been missed for years and years. And I didn't know it either. We don't know what we don't know, do we? Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, and when we are talking around that, you know, being trauma aware is that, you know, guiding people back to themselves is mm -hmm. one of the most powerful things that we can do in that space rather than leading them down somewhere else like where that. they're further and further away from the path of their heart. Like it, it really, um, I don't know, I do feel that coaches and you know and it's okay to be an expert like it's okay to be an expert in something can have lots of amazing things that you can advise somebody on if you've walked the path before if you have knowledge sharing that knowledge is different to advice giving yes. and it's really good to 
check within each of us where that line is. Like I am talking to you right now, like we are advising people about maybe be, keep being careful around giving advice. Um, but we're But there's this level of informing which is very different to when you're having a conversation or a coaching conversation with someone where you're trying to empower them to make their own decisions and own choices. Yeah. Yeah. So it is about choosing, choosing the times and choosing how you deliver it. Um, you know, if anybody tells me I should do something, then I'm running. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And, and it's interesting, whereas I would go towards which was really interesting because I used to think I was so independent. I had such a strong mind and I was confident. Then I lost it. So I'd go towards like, you're going to tell me I should do this. Well, I should, of course I should, you know? So it's interesting. Whereas now I would run a mile too, mm. because I love the way you explained that going uh, advice takes away. Whereas we're weaving. I love the way you flowed your hand because that's what we're doing is. Mm. And this is what um, the psychologist I work with, who's now also my supervisor, she said, you're coming back to inner strength. So I used to think it was confidence, but she kept coming back at me. You're coming back to inner strength. I went, that's it. We're coming back to being the strong people we are, but we've lost sight of. Yes. We come back to that inner wisdom, aren't we? That inner. And we can't, we can definitely get there by, you know, taking in information from outside but we'll never get there if we don't have that process of discerning which is that word that you brought in earlier in the conversation mm -hmm. we don't have that discernment and that checking in to go hey is this piece of information is this um piece of advising of advice that's come to me is that something that I can bring in and it fits in the path of my heart or does it not yes. um so, you know, there's that part of it as well. So there's, and there's responsibility. And I think responsibility is a big part in this. In the, There's responsibility on both sides. There's responsibility to be helping people to find their own answers and be supporting them and, and judgment. Let's just put judgment over here because um, like you were saying with the ego before, advice can be quite judgy. <laughs> yeah, because if you don't do it this way, it's not going to work. <laughs> FOMO, fear of missing out comes in or fear of getting it wrong, doesn't it? Mm. Absolutely. Sorry, just had a little cough. Yeah. Um, yes. And it's also saying the way that you're doing it right now, I don't think is right. And I think you should do it this way. Yes. Like advice can put that extra layer on it, can't it? It yeah. can. And I like that because what I found, it took me a while to be able to unravel this and to understand so when you do that like you said what it did it, I didn't realize it was putting a lid on me mm. therefore there was no flow and therefore I could never understand why I was not getting further so of course it played into either going back to them for more spending more money because I kept feeling I was doing it wrong there must be something wrong with me Trish because I didn't know how to take responsibility at that point responsibility wasn't given so as you said this is where the enmeshment comes in and we don't yeah. realize we're doing it. So I think sometimes with advice giving, we can, we want to help be a, I mean, do good, it comes to mind, but that often what comes to mind, a do good, it gives advice. Mm -hmm. And then otherwise it comes, I know better than you, because in business, again, coming back to running a business, well, there are people I go to them because they know better than me, how to market or how to do Zoom or how to do Facebook or whatever it might be. But as you said, it's like, well, do I want to go down that path that way? Yes, and, and that's where the other side of responsibility, so there's that responsibility when you're wanting to give advice to maybe choose a question instead that helps mm -hmm. somebody find their own mm -hmm. answer. And then there's the responsibility on the side of the person who's looking for a way through for them to build up their discernment about whether that is advice to take on or not or whether that's in alignment so yeah it's a beautiful practice of responsibility and responsibility really is all about um being in your power rather you know because responsibility can feel a bit heavy whereas being in your power is the same thing it's just a yeah. different way of speaking yeah. it oh i like that i like that and the other thing that came to mind as you was talking responsibility is about being responding versus reacting mm. so as you said all this comes into play and I like what you said because 
something that I was shown and I've learned, and this is again how I like to be with people, and you've sort of mentioned in an indirect way, so I'd like you to confirm that you is that it's also us learning to trust our bodies again because our bodies actually tell us whether does that feel right or not, not just the mind, because our mind might go, yes, that's what I want to do. But our body's going, no, but we no longer trust intuition, um, wisdom and strength. How, how, you know, talk, if you want talk a little bit more about that too, you know, it's, it's here within us, isn't it? Within our bodies. And I think for all of us, but especially, you know, around working through and out of, you know, into and through trauma, like we, we need to learn we all are on this journey to learn how what our what our truth is and what methods we're going mm. to get there. Mm. And everybody will have a unique way of accessing that deeper truth, that deeper knowing there, you know, what I call their inner leader, that inner compass that is going to help yes. guide them back to the path yeah. of their hearts. Yeah. And it can be like, yes, the body, the body totally knows its stores, it has. It's all this wisdom and knowledge within us. Um, so learning how to access the access that body knowledge, the emotions, the emotions are incredible barometers to um, what our truth is. Our mind has so many layers to it that there can be truth and um, but also there can be we can get taken off path. So it's this, I almost feel like we need all three, that we need to yeah. be body soul and heart and mind and bring keep coming back and checking into them so I know for myself I can get off path if I'm too in my mind too in my head too much in everybody else's yes. space and not spending enough time coming back in to myself to my heart to my body to connecting back into that place um, and learning how we how 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 your unique being is what it needs in terms of making decisions and being discerning mm -hmm. and we will all have our own unique pathways to that it could be to dance it out or it could be to do mm -hmm. um you know stream of consciousness writing it could be to have a conversation with someone that doesn't judge you or to give you advice yeah. it you know like we all will need to find our way through the minutiae of <laughs> mm. everything that's going on it, oh, I love this I love this because that's what I needed to learn was mm. to take on that's what I said earlier like you need to own what's right for you because like you said um we I can give advice like I give ideas or suggestions I say this so clearly to people like for example one way I love to support myself is journaling some people go oh my god I don't know how to write okay you don't need to write you might want to as you said dance you might want to do poetry you might want to do doodling so again it's like you tune in right let's you know processes you tune into your body because initially sometimes you can be so numb you don't know you actually need the advice to get you started mm. You know, but then it's like, okay, that doesn't work for me now. I'm understanding that. What does? Again, you tune in. Well, what, what, what gives you joy? Mm. You know, something I you said before we came on, you just been horse riding. I was like, yes. You know, that's something you like, clearly love and enjoy. So it might be someone needs to do something like that. Hmm. Yeah. And so like, and this segues beautifully into, so, you know, as when I'm teaching coaches, when we are looking at coaching theory, there are lots of ways to create a smorgasbord of ideas that people can pick and choose their own answers from. And just, I'm going to mute for a moment. Um, yeah, and one of the ways that I love that process of creating a smorgasbord of ideas is to group brainstorm, yes. is to um, put ideas out that then spark the idea of another that the other person comes up with. So instead of it being like an advice down, like where you're putting advice onto some, someone, it's almost like you can spread out the table and go, oh, well, what about this dish? And they can go, oh, well, that would go well with this dish. And oh, well, what about that? And that you spark ideas like you were saying ideas suggestions and that you create a collaborative process of coming up with possible solutions that 
And then checking in, does that make my heart sing? Like, oh, yeah, going for a horse ride this morning totally makes my heart sing. Um, and, you know, and in that, I have had so much, like I'm fairly, I rode donkeys as a kid and, um, but have only had a horse for a few years. And so I spend a lot of time watching, you know, Pirelli or Wallach Sheila, Sheila or all these different videos out there about horse connecting with your horse and um, all these different ways of learning about horses. So I'm going out there, I'm seeking all this information and being given all these different ideas that I'm putting on my ideas table. And then I go and in partnership with my horse, I try on that one. I check in with my body. Does this feel good? And then I go and try on another one. And does this feel good? And it's this beautiful learning. And if we can kind of move as a people that receive advice, because we're going to, we're never going to change the word from being a full of advice. The advice, what did I call it initially when we talked about this? The, the advice pandemic. Yes, that's right. You <laughs> did. That's that. right. That's right. That's what got me thinking. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. So if we can um, get better at going, oh, well, that's an interesting idea. I'll pop it on my table, but I'm not going to take that on without checking in with myself and being as experimental around it. Oh, yeah, I'll try that. But also checking back in. And I really do love that, 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 point that you brought across about checking back in with your body checking in with your heart yeah it is because that's what and as we said earlier to explore how to support empowered change because that does support empowered change as an individual as a group and going out further like you said and I love that and I love like you said because as I mentioned earlier and we talked about this I was numb at first what I even needed because uh, I was in such a state but what I loved as I started opening up was hearing other people's ideas because I didn't know how to look after myself. I didn't know what I wanted. That also came from childhood, having my desires met. I had my needs met, not my desires or wants. You want that? No, you can't. So what you're saying is, and this is what I'm loving, is to give people the opportunity, oh, yeah, I, 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 can, I didn't think I could do that. No, I might not want to do that, like I said, but I could do this, like you said. And I'm loving that because I'm exploring new ideas too. So until we start talking about other ideas, because I've had clients teach, go, I think, oh, oh, I like that. Because some of them, we can still get caught up a little bit in our own way of doing things, which is cool, which is what we want. And we don't always open ourselves up to exploring other things. But that comes mm -hmm. with safety and trust. And that's part of being trauma aware of being able to support someone and you becoming aware of yourself of how far can I go? I'll give you one example. Before, um, just dropped in two things that I did, which were really um, took me outside. I really wanted to overcome a fear. So I jumped out of a plane and then I scaled down one of our tortoise buildings here in Perth, or both to raise funds, just so you know. Now, why was I saying that? Now, I actually didn't realize that I thought it was a good idea. I can't remember why I was actually saying that. What were we talking about? There was some reason why. Oh, that's right. It went beyond what I was able to at the time. So I didn't understand enough about PTSD. What I didn't realize was it triggered me into PTSD jumping out of the plane. Whereas with the second one, it didn't. But again, it felt like a good idea. So my mind was working, but I wasn't listening to my body. Mm. So the second time when I went to scale down, I actually went and saw the psychologist and she talked me through it and explained to me why there's an idea. She didn't give me advice but she was strongly inferring I shouldn't do it. But my ego was getting in the way. So we made, we, we made it, well, I made the deal. <laughs> if I did a practice and it didn't work, I wouldn't do it, okay? But she held me. She gave me that empower, empowered me to make that. And she allowed me to go down the track that I had to do this, okay? Mm. Yeah. Looking back now, oh, my God, no, I should never have done it from a body point of view of, traumatizing because I've traumatized myself completely mm. Mm. yeah so that's that, that so there's that fine line between in this case I'll give this story where she needed to she wanted to I think she actually wanted me not to do it but how not to say that to give me the to, for me to come to that understanding myself it was a real skill it's a real skill and a gift yeah and I kept pushing her uh, away <coughs> But also, you know, yes, it, you know, had listened to your body, that would have, it would have been different. 
and some sometimes we need to to make the mistakes yes. so that we can learn from them like discernment is as much about knowing what we what doesn't work as learning as what does yes. um maybe it would be a little worrying if then the next day you went and jumped out of the plane again <laughs> but, you know <laughs> absolutely that's right that's yeah right. but you know and as a mum I'm having to learn that you know that yeah um, I don't think that's a good idea but you're going to have to do that and figure out that it's not a good idea for yourself and I guess that kind of brings us around as well to the other part of advice giving that um, means that it doesn't always work as a strategy to help people create change is that if the idea doesn't come from within if it comes from somewhere else there's less take up yes. so you know when we look at it like you know we're in the team dynamic one of the things about empowering teams is that people need to have ownership in decisions so that you know, creating a, pro a process for change, if we can bring as many voices into that so that people feel that they have ownership into it because they're part of the creating of the idea, it's a lot more likely to succeed. So as individuals, if, and I mean, like we've all known where we've given that piece of advice and they're like, no, no, haven't really taken it on. And then six months later, they've come up with this idea while they're in the shower and it works amazingly because it's come from within um so yeah so sometimes asking a question that helps them to come up with the thing that they want to do is going to be a lot more powerful than putting it in putting it on top yes I agree with you but as you were saying that and again this is an idea came through as well that even if it came through, like you're discussing it in a group and it might not have been your idea but I think also if it's a group thing, as long as you also feel heard, it might not go the way you wanted, it might not be fully there. But when you discuss, it's about you feeling heard that you can put your point of view across. So even though the decision might be, if, particularly if it has to be a collective one, it might not be the one that you where you wanted it to go. So how can you support yourself or be supported? I hear you or look, give me your ideas. Actually, no, we can't work with that now. But you feel like, oh, I've been part of the process. Now, yeah, and the change ideas. Too will also they spark like we talked before yeah. like you have an idea then there's this other idea oh that's a bit better oh and then oh there <laughs> you know so there's this there's this process but yeah I do think as well being heard is amazing so in terms of having powerful conversations a lot of the time being able to actually really listen like deeply listen to somebody no matter what they're talking about but for them to feel truly heard is so much more powerful than any advice and I think that's a really we're coming to the end but I think that's a really beautiful way to hop that's the bookend <laughs> not quite but but yeah it's a book because we start I agree with you Mm. And this is something where, again, as people, but as coaches, even as therapists, whatever it might be, it's re really understanding that. Sometimes people simply want to be able to talk, to start making sense of it without judgment, and that I heard you. I might not understand it. I might not get it. I might not agree. But that's not the point. Mm. Yeah. Absolutely not the point. And you know this this loss of empowerment that we that we can have through trauma through being led down paths of advice and that culture of being needing somebody else to tell us what to do and look I've just headed off down this path that was going to finish up this bookend and it's just gone <laughs> over there somewhere I forgot what I was going to say <laughs> along with you going oh I love the sound of that <laughs> but I think this is what's so beautiful about this conversation showing people that this happens yeah you know <laughs> that you know here it is you know we weren't quite sure what we were going to say someone might be able to put it in the comments was it going down yes. this one what, where, where was I going back to <laughs> tell me in the comments where was I heading back I want to know where I was meant to end up <laughs> I love it I love it thank you and I think it's like you said, this is why I wanted this conversation was about trauma advice conversations. And I think it's not to put people off from not having conversations because we 
we need to start using words so people be oh is that what trauma is and that's why you're doing the work you're doing that's why i've done the also the youtube channel is to start people hearing about it talking so i didn't know at first how to put words to this mm. and you've just given me you've given me aha moments just in this last you know 25 minutes of having this chat thank you so good isn't it it so is good. and that's empowered me You've empowered me. We've empowered those people, women or people who wish to watch. And that is what this is all about. Mm. How can we support each other in this and yeah. laugh when we go down a track? We don't know where we're going. Yes. Yes. And the most beautiful gift you can give is your presence. So like to step back from feeling like just because there's been trauma, there is no responsibility on anybody else to fix anything so to let that go I think is a really a really big part of it and to yeah allow that that opening that listening that that conversation to create and evolve um without having to yeah to bring the judgment on oh, here we go I finally fell back <laughs> there you go yeah that we can get used to needing everybody else to agree with us and that is beautiful like yeah that presence if we can give that present of presence that even if we do have opinions that we can be open and non-judgmental and that take away the need for anybody to persuade us in any way like we can all be we can all be <laughs> that's right we can all be and we also can also not be in that space because for me it's still a learning mm. and I think this is this is part of the learning isn't it is constantly and I think the words we used when I was trained self-determination and self-reflection you need to constantly keep coming back why did I trigger or why did I say that what tone of voice and it's not to be able to get ridiculous I got caught up in it for a while there it's just as you said and I love that just just creating space here it is here it is, and our hearts are open to receiving and giving. Oh, my goodness, I could go on for a little bit longer. I'm sure you could too, so thank you. Now, just let people know, again, just remind them what you do, how to get hold of you, and I will put the links down here, you know, um, in the comments when I put this onto YouTube. So just what anyone, what would you like to say to anyone? Is there anything else you'd like to add, like, again, who you work with? Sure. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I love working with people who are going out into the world and making change and supporting anybody who's on a mission to lead change in their connecting with their inner leader, with that inner mastery, all of this coming back to yourself and, and walking that way. And any teams that are looking to really create that strong, supportive team environment that's about all rising together yeah. so yeah you can find me um, on all the usual social media channels my web page is weave um, and i'm on insight timer so i was just going to say yeah hang out with me on insight timer which yeah. is a um, beautiful beautiful place to connect it is and what i love about insight timer is that you have your guided library but you also can do lives and you're just now preparing your first ever course so that's a beautiful space too so as i said uh, everyone i'll put that down there and if you want to reach out to trish please do and thank you for listening and thank you trish for giving us this beautiful empowered conversation about <laughs> how to support powered empowered because i love that empowered change thank, thank you. you and thank you everyone thank you. thanks again trish thank you